All right, I got something I want to talk to you about today. I was fishing with a buddy a couple of days ago, and he asked me a question. His brother had a bad experience. His wife decided to go to Nashville and spend the day with a married man, and it was a problem, obviously. But then she took off and went on a three- or four-week trip with somebody she met online. So she came back, an adulterous woman, and wanted back. She got tired of the man she was traveling with. And so he didn't want to, he didn't want to take her back. I can understand that thoroughly. So his family said, no, you need to take her back. You need to forgive her there, Christian family. And the others said, yes, you need to forgive her. But he didn't feel like forgiving her. Now, biblically, he had a right to just divorce her and marry again because she had dissolved the marriage with her adultery. The one flesh union that she formed with him, she pulled away from it and formed a one flesh union with somebody else. So the marriage was dissolved. Now, if he took her back, it had to be a, he'd have to marry her again, in effect. So what should he do? You know, there's a time when forgiveness is sin. Now, here's what I told my friend. I said, there can be no forgiveness without judgment. If you look in the Bible, there was never forgiveness without judgment. God has passed judgment upon our sin and demanded that we repent. So we have to pass judgment on ourselves. We have to say, which what that woman should say, if she had true repentance, she'd come back and say, wow, I made a terrible mistake. I'm so sorry I hurt you. I hurt the children. I just, I hurt God. I'm just sick of what I did. I'm, I know that no reason you'd ever take me back, but I just want to come back and love my children and try to love my husband and make this thing work. It'll never happen again. I'm sorry. It was an awful decision I made. You know, we forgive people all the time that show contrition, that show sorrow and grief over their sin. We forgive them. It's, it's hard not to, but it's impossible to forgive someone when their offense is ongoing. Now, you say, well, Jesus said forgive seven times 70, 490 times in one day. Yes, but he said do it. If they come back and repent, then forgive them. But if there's no repentance, you don't forgive them. We live in a day and age when judgment is frowned upon. The word judgment appears in the Bible 733 times. And only two or three times is it a warning against judging. The rest of the time, it's, it's God judging or an exhortation for us to judge or a demand from God that we judge. The most quoted verse in the Bible is found in Matthew, which says, Judge not that you be not judged, for with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. In what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. Now, what that says is, don't judge because you are going to be judged and you will be judged according to the same standard you use on other people. And another passage says, Thinkest thou this, O man, that judgeth them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? That's Romans 2, verse 3. In other words, the judgment of God is coming. And when we judge others, and we've done the same thing, he said that judgment is going to fall back on you. So the exhortation in the Bible to not judge is not saying that judgment is wrong. It's saying it's wrong when you're guilty of the same thing. It's wrong when you use it as a way of putting people down rather than taking a stand for righteousness. The Bible says in Romans 2.16, in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men, by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. And he says another place in 1 Corinthians 6, 2 and 4, Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not 
that we shall judge angels, how much more things pertaining to this life. If you have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. Okay. <laughs> in other words, the church has an office of judgment. The church has people set aside. Their purpose is to make judgments, to decide right and wrong. When you fail to judge, you're normalizing sin. When you fail to judge, you are being complicit in the sin. So until there is judgment, there can't be forgiveness. Now, the problem is, and I see it, is that so many people are ready to point the finger of judgment at others, not realizing that three fingers are pointing back at them. And so for that reason, we need to be very cautious about passing judgment. In fact, there's no need to pass judgment on other people unless it personally is affecting us in some way, unless, unless there's some demand made up on us like the man, take your wife back. Well, that's affecting him and his life and his children. So he, he has to make a judgment there. Everybody judges all day long. The people who, who, who are offended by you judging are judging you for judging. So it's unavoidable to make judgments. Judgments are simply our valuation of the value of things, the good or the bad, the right or the wrong, whether we ought to or ought not. And we're all doing that constantly all the time. That's, it's impossible to be human and not pass judgment. The problem is people are offended by the very idea of God who will bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. We'll all stand before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the things done in the body, whether they be good or whether they be evil. So judgment's coming. Uh, <laughs> Hundreds of times the Bible speaks of that judgment coming. But, you know, judgment should be like soap and water. You use it on yourself first before you offer it to someone else. And so mainly our judgments should be judging the right and wrong of matters for us individually, personally, and getting our own life in order. But after that, when we're confronted with social issues, are confronted with... Uh, uh, relationships, uh, we have to make a judgment. And the person that needs to be forgiven can't be forgiven unless you treat their sin as sin. If you treat it as something to be passed over, you normalize it and they keep doing it. So it's a sad world we live in. <laughs> All of us need to be forgiven. And we all look to people around us and hope they forgive us, ask them to forgive us. But let's pass judgment on ourselves before we ask for that forgiveness. And let's expect judgment from others before we forgive them because there are times when forgiveness would be a sin. All right, I'm going to stop there and go back to sharpening my tommyhawk. Hawk.